Hello class, welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 1-5, Day 2. Today we are going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to add and subtract those fractions. So just a reminder, like denominators means that both of the bottom numbers, the denominators, are going to be the same. So if we are adding these fractions, I have 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, you'll see both bottom numbers are 7. And that's great. That makes my life a lot easier. So when this happens, you get to just bring that bottom number over. You do not change it. Um, when you are adding fractions, you only change the top number when you are adding. So I'd say 3 plus 2 is 5 and I would be done. My answer is 5 over 7. And it is as simple as that. Let's look at this example on the right. We have negative 3 tenths plus negative 3 tenths. So notice both of my numbers are negative. I'm adding them together. That means my answer is going to be negative. And then I have 10 on the bottom of both fractions, so I know I'm still going to have that 10. And then I'm just going to say 3 plus 3, which is 6. So my answer is a negative 6 over 10. And you're going to be tempted to box this and move on to the next problem. However, this one does have an additional step. And that additional step is something called reducing the fraction or simplifying, writing it in simplest terms. You will hear all sorts of different ways to describe um, the next step. So what that this next step is, is it's where we look at these two numbers, 6 and 10, and we think what number are both of these divisible by? So like 6 and 10, right off the bat I see, hey, I have an even number over an even number. That right there is going to be a flag in my mind that they're at least divisible by 2. So 6 divided by 2 would give me 3, 10 divided by 2 would give me 5, and then if I look 3 and 5, they aren't divisible by the same number unless you count 1, but dividing by 1 doesn't change the answer. So in this case, 1 doesn't really matter, okay, when you're simplifying. So my final answer would be negative 3 fifths. All right, but what about when we have something a little more complicated? We have mixed numbers. So mixed numbers are where you have the, the whole number and the fraction put together. And there are a couple different ways you can handle this. So you could take your whole numbers and write them together. And you can take your fractions and write them together. So you're just kind of regrouping these um, and that's totally okay. So 12 plus 7 gives me 19. And then 8 fifteenths plus 4 fifteenths, I know I have that 15 on the bottom, and then 8 plus 4 is 12, and I want to simplify that. 12 fifteenths, I know that both of those numbers are divisible by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4, 15 divided by 3 is going to give me 5. I'm going to write that just as a little visual for you guys. So my final answer is going to be 19 and 4 fifths. Okay, so when you separate them, just be sure to make, um, be sure to be careful that you have both of your numbers put back together for your final answer, okay? Now let's look at this next one. I have 3 and 6 elevenths plus 1 and 7 elevenths. So again, if I do that same idea, I could say 3 plus 1 and I could say 6 elevenths plus 7 elevenths. So this would give me 4, and then I have 11 on the bottom. 6 plus 7 is 13. Now this one's a little different because I can't divide 13 and 11 by anything, but since my bigger number is on top, this is where I'm going to turn this into a mixed number. I would say 11 can go into 13 one time without going over, and I would have 2 left over. So now I actually have 4 plus 1 and 2 elevenths. So I can rewrite this as 4 plus 1 is 5, 
and then just bring my fraction down. So my final answer for this problem would be 5 and 2 elevenths. All right, we have 4 and 7 sixteenths plus 14 and 11 sixteenths. Go ahead and add and solve and see what you get. Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you ended up at 19 and 1 eighths. Um, you can see I started by taking the 4 and the 14. I added those together to get that 18. And then I did 7 sixteenths plus 11 sixteenths, which gave me 18 sixteenths, which is an improper fraction because it's the biggest numbers on top. So that would become 1 and 2 sixteenths. And then I saw the 2 sixteenths can be reduced to a 1 eighth. So I had 18 plus 1 to give me that. 19 and then 2 sixteenths became 1 eighth. So that's how I ended up at 19 and 1 eighth. If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm happy to help you. Now, let's start practicing some subtraction. So again, I still have the same denominator, which is great. I'm still going to keep that denominator the same. Sometimes I'll see students when especially when they're subtracting for some reason, where they will take this and they would write it as three minus two, or three minus one is two, and then seven minus seven is zero, and they would say this is their final answer. That's a really common mistake, but you need to remember when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you don't actually change your bottom number when you are adding or subtracting. So this final answer would be 2 over 7 because I can't simplify that at all. Now looking over at this problem on the right hand side, I have 15 seventeenths minus 19 seventeenths. So notice I have a smaller number minus a bigger number. So this is where our practice with integers is going to pay off. So we talked about how like the first step, identify which number is bigger. So which oops, number is bigger? And so in this case, it'd be either 15 or 19. Well, that would be 19. And that is a negative number. So that means that your answer is going to be negative. And then you do big minus small. So I would do 19 minus 15 which is 4, and then you just write it as a final answer. So I'm going to have a negative 4 over 17, because remember, we're not going to change that bottom number because we are subtracting fractions. Okay, so I have negative 4 seventeenths. All right, let's try subtracting some mixed numbers now. So you can see I have 7 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to show you two different ways to solve these problems, okay? So when you have all of the big numbers listed first, so you can see 7 is bigger than 1 and 3 is bigger than 1. When that happens, things are pretty straightforward. You just treat it like you did your addition. Okay, so I would do 6 minus 1 is 5, 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 2 fourths, and then I would simplify that 2 fourths by dividing the top and bottom by 2, and I would get 1 half. So that would be my answer there. However, when you are looking at this second problem here, you can see that 8 is bigger than 6, but the problem is that 1 is not bigger than 3. And when that happens, you need to do a slightly different method. Um, and something I tell students is if you're worried about remembering to check for this, you can always do this method. You can do this method for addition or subtraction always, okay? So if you're someone that just likes to know one way to do something, what I'm about to do is 
the way you want to use, okay? Because it always works. So we're going to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. And the way that we do that is we multiply. We take the bottom of the fraction and multiply with the whole number. So that's 40. And then we add the top number, which is 1. So I have 41 fifths. And that bottom number is going to stay the same, OK? And then I do the same thing over here. I say 6 times 5, that's 30, plus 3 would be 33 fifths. And now I can subtract just like I have been. So 41 fifths minus 33 fifths is going to give me 8 fifths because 41 minus 33 is 8 and then subtracting fractions that bottom number stays the same. Now the last step that you have to do is just reduce this so in this case it's an improper fraction so I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. I say 5 goes into the number 8 one time and there are 3 left over. So I have one and three-fifths as my final answer. So again, that is that method is going to work always, 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 always. So if you're adding or subtracting with negative numbers, that's a great thing to do if the signs don't match, like you have one positive, one negative. Um, I would highly recommend using that method. All right. And why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own? Good luck. All right, for this problem, hopefully you ended up at a negative one fourth. You saw that we were doing um, a small number minus a bigger number. So again, I used that same pattern where I saw the the bigger number was the negative or being subtracted. So I knew my answer was going to be negative, and then I did the big minus small, so 7 minus 5, which is 2. And then I knew my answer would be a negative, because 7 was negative, 2 over 8, which reduces or simplifies down to negative 1 over 4, because both 2 and 8 can be divided by 2. Okay, so our final answer is negative 1 fourth. If you have questions about this problem or anything else from this video, please be sure to reach out for some help and I am happy to help you. I hope you have a great day.